Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jay Kishi, and this is Producer Tip Tuesday, where we discuss overlooked topics on how to be a better producer. Before we get into the video, if you guys have any ideas, suggestions, or questions related to these videos and topics you might want me to discuss in future episodes, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Well, without further ado, hope you guys enjoy. Today's tip is seven steps to having a strong collaboration, seven steps to collaborate better. This advice can apply to producers collaborating with other producers or producers collaborating with other artists or artists collaborating with other artists. So I think it all ties together. So the first thing is make sure you connect with the person. I think there's a there's a huge meme in the producer community of like, yo, yo, yo your beats are fire. Let's collab, bro. Yo, let's collab, bro. Fire emoji. And the thing that you should just keep in mind is that the first thing you want to do is actually like build a relationship with this person and be familiar with their work. Understand why you want to collaborate with them. If someone has similar skills and similar sound to you, it's may, it may seem like a good idea to collaborate, but you should really ask yourself, like, what do you think you're going to get out of this? Because a lot of people do this collaboration stuff almost like a way to get clout. And I mean, that's there's a fine way to, to do that if you're trying to build a beat, you know, selling business or something. But if, uh, if I'm taking the assumption that you want to collaborate with someone for an artistic music, music goal, a vision that you have, then yeah, get to know their recent work, understand their strengths and weaknesses, maybe how they relate to you. Your, your weaknesses are their strengths or vice versa. It'd be a great chance to collaborate, but actually have a conversation with them and, and understand if you're the one approaching them for a collaborate for collaboration, understand what your vision is, uh, when you, when you come to do that. The second thing, number two, is set expectations. So what do you need from them? Will this be released? Is this a feature or is it something that you want to build like a new project? Like you and I together, we're going to like have a new Spotify artist page for our music together. I want to like start a new project with you. Uh, is it going to be like a concept album? Is it going to be part of something? Or are you just doing it for fun? You just want to mess around and... and have fun. That's, that's a perfectly fine reason to collaborate, but you should set that expectation so that way someone's not, you know, setting aside all the things that they need to do that that's higher priority for them. Um, when for you, it's not as high priority, especially if you're the one, you know, coming, coming to them, asking for a, a opportunity to collaborate, you know, if it's going to be released, it's good to start off saying, if you can pay them, that you're willing to pay them if you can't pay them that you're not able to pay them but that you're still interested from an artistic perspective and say that you really think like you guys could make some great music together and also if you're going to split royalties or anything like that uh, down the line from streaming revenue or if you expect them to promote it or anything in that vein of releasing things that go along with that and also who's going to be responsible for mixing and mastering and finishing the thing if you guys are going to take it all the way to a release. If you have a network and they have a network of people, whether it's that's mixing and mastering or even like shooting video, uh, taking care of album cover artwork, stuff like that, the more you have awareness of that beforehand, the uh, it just makes things a lot smoother. The third thing is set the workflow before you start. Understand how things are going to flow in terms of how are you guys going to have to share a lot of files back and forth? You should have a folder or something set up so that way it's really easy. You can just pop in there. You can say like, hey, I'm dropping off the stems in here or hey, I got that vocal take. It's right here. Having a space dedicated somewhere on your Dropbox or your Google Drive or wherever. So that way you guys can can send files back and forth makes things a lot easier because sending things on email or trying to pass things through like um attachments in like messenger or anything like that can get really frustrating and really messy along with that i think it's also about going into the session and having a vision of an or an idea and if they have another idea being willing to listen to them but if they don't have any ideas you should come into the session with an idea so making sure the workflow is is ready to go like you understand like we're going to send stems back and forth or like if you have the same program, we could send project files back and forth. I, I collaborate with other people who use Ableton. I can tidy up all my files and just send them the Ableton project so they don't even have to deal with stems. Uh, the more you know about that stuff, the, the easier it'll be for you guys to not have to 
go back and forth trying to figure out what's going on. All right, the fourth tip is make sure you start smoothly. And starting is really the hardest part of collaborating, whether you're collaborating in person, like if you have a rapper or an artist in your studio with you and you're collaborating with them, you're making a beat, they're kind of depending on you to set the vibe. So that's why I say you should come in with an idea of what you want. So that way, if all else fails, you have something that you can start from and build off of that. The starting is, is always very difficult, but you can you can make the process really fun for both people, whether that's, you know, somebody who knows a little bit of percussion chops or has a little percussion chops or has some uh, keys and knows how to play keys a little bit, being able to set up something for them to play with or something for them to contribute with, something for them to use to, to play with ideas. Like if I'm working with someone who is a songwriter, then it's helpful for them to have, you know, a mic that's ready to go in case they have some idea that they really just want to get down, even if it's not going to be a final take of or anything, just an idea like a sketch pad kind of jotting down vocal ideas that can be really helpful and make it a lot smoother. So that way they don't feel like they're just like waiting for you to finish the beat, waiting for you to finish doing the baseline, waiting for you to finish doing this or doing that. And they're just kind of have to keep track of the ideas that they're, that may be coming up in their head. So making sure that you have a way for them to be involved and make them not feel like they have to wait. The other thing is don't question things before they start developing. So don't like, Hey, is this snare sound good to you? Does this kick sample sound good to you? I think it's better to just start moving. And then if you've already had a conversation about what kind of music you like, what kind of vision you have for this, for this thing, then just go from that. If you're the person driving in Ableton or in a DAW building the track from scratch, if you're the person doing that, don't ask for permission to do things. Just start throwing things in there. Just start doing your thing. Follow your own idea of what you want and incorporate in what you've gathered from them and listening to their music and your conversations with them. And then once things get to a point where there's a, like a little bit of a skeleton of the drum patterns and the, maybe the harmony or maybe the melody, there's something there, then you can start actually saying like, Hey, what do you think you want to add? Do you, do you, do you think you want to add anything? If they have problems with something, I think as long as you've made a, a an environment that's comfortable for them, they should be willing to to say, oh, I don't like that. And that's a really important thing for collaboration is that both people need to be like on the same page. So when you're starting, just try not to question things before they develop. Try not to ask, you know, is this the right bass preset? Is this the right bass sound that you want? Like, even if you're not thinking of it as like a collaboration, but instead just like I'm making a beat for you, they don't have to sign off on everything. You know what you're doing. So just believe in yourself and, and just, uh, you know, keep your head down and focus. And if they say they don't like something, then, you know, start thinking about, well, what, what, is there anything else? Like, is, is there a different sound that you prefer? Number five is be timely. So especially if you're collaborating remotely, you know, understanding all those things we talked about before, the priorities for each person, whether it's going to be released, what, what the purpose of this track is, have your own workflow down pat, have your own process uh, ingrained, whether it's the, the big things like procrastination and using your time effectively, or the smaller things that are still important, like hot keys and navigation around your program, having your studio set up in a way that you can work quickly. Things are plugged in, things are turned on all those things that can help you turn things around quickly will make you much easier to collaborate with because, you know, whether it is something urgent or lower priority for, for both people, knowing that your collaborator is is reliable and will turn things around in an expected in a, in a reasonable time frame is really encouraging as as someone who wants to collaborate with you. So you may have may need to have some discussion beforehand about like what do you expect, like how soon do you need this, how soon could you get this back to me, all those things. But just keep keep in mind that their opinion of you will be reflected in how quickly you turn things around as well as the quality of the work that you put out. Number six is honesty and respect. And I think these are just like kind of a given, but just keep in mind, you know, don't, don't just hype things up for the sake of hyping them up just to make them feel good. Make sure you under promise and over deliver. So don't, you know, if someone sends you something and you're like, yo, I've got the craziest 808s ready. Just wait. I can't wait till you get to hear it. Like, yo, I've got the craziest kick patterns. I'm going to put, put an insane reverb on this snare drum right here. Like 
saying all these things about the music, but it hasn't been heard by them. Like it's good to be excited and it's, it's fine to communicate like, yo, I'm really excited about this, but don't hype it up just because it's great to be in a position where you surprise people with how effective your work is. You know, we said this before, but both people should vibe with everything in the track. So respecting each other and, you know, I may like something, but they may not, may not like something and they're involved in this track too. It's not my track. It's both of ours at this point, whether my name is on it or their name is on it or both. So respect each other. And if you do disagree strongly, try to find a, a compromise through actually ex like uh, explaining what you like and what you don't like. So that way, you know, things don't just get tangled up in terms of uh, feelings and emotions about this or that being able to say like, oh, we're both, we're both vibing with this. So let's keep it like this, or we're not both vibing with this. So let's change it. And if you're going to critique something, make sure you, you, as much as possible, you say it constructively. And if you're going to say, I don't like that snare drum, then suggest a different kind of snare drum or say why. Even if you don't give a suggestion, like exactly like change that chord to this chord, just say like, I think it's too dramatic. I think it's too spacey. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a strong direction. It doesn't feel resolved. Like how, make sure you actually explain what you don't like or what you do like. And understanding that if you're the person who they reached out to, or, uh, you know, it's their track, understand that it may at the end of the day, not get released. It may just be a demo. People may not ever hear this track. So. If something goes wrong, be willing to fix things or work around what someone else has to say. Don't be discouraged just because they say it's going to be a demo or they, they, they look at it as a demo and not as a finished track. Be ready to listen to what they want for the future. So that way you guys can keep collaborating, assuming you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, then why would you collaborate with them? And the last thing, tip number seven is there's no one size fits all. Don't, don't think of every person as having the same approach to collaboration. Every person is going to have a different set of skills, a different set of tastes. Each artist will have a different, a different level of involvement. Some people will just want to hear you making a beat and then you hand it off to them and they'll do a bunch of stuff with it. And that's all you need to say. Other people may, may want a lot more input, may want to be present for a lot more of the process for them to feel like it's actually a collaboration or for them to feel like they can get their vision across to you. So don't expect every person, you know, wh what's worked for you in the past may work with them, but be willing to try new things because there's no, there's no such thing as one type of artist. There's as many types of artists are there as there are people. So treat each, each person individually and with respect and don't try to force something just because it may have worked for you in the past in the way that you collaborate and work with artists. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.